guys, I'm Rhett with the Mix Club. I got a really cool video here right now. I have the SSL UC1 controller and I have the SoftTube Console 1 Mark III controller. I'm going to see which ones suit me the best in this video tonight. I'm basically going to mix. I'll do a little talking, not a lot. I just want to capture the workflow so you guys can kind of see what's going on, right? But anyway, I love both controllers. There's nothing wrong with either one of them. They're both really, really strong. I want to see, though, just which one fits in my workflow the best. Anyway, let's get started. Here we go. All right, I got this kind of like little blues track here that we're going to mix out. I'm going to start the mix, first of all, with the console one. So let me go ahead and pull up the console one screen, and I'm just going to dig into it. Let's start off with the kick. Here we go. Hit it with a little drive, maybe. A character. All right, let's go to the kick out. Okay, I'm going to slide the kick out up. In, rather. All right, um, that, that's, I'm fine with that. Let's go ahead to the kick sub. Let me do a little high cut because we don't need that stuff in there. And there is a chance you could have some noise. Sometimes when you do cuts, you know, you do get some phasing issues, but I'm not worried about that here. Fade that in and out. All right, I'm fine with that because, like I said, I really don't want a ton of the, the subby kick for this particular track. Let's go ahead and slide in our snare drum. This will be our top. Good little tops on this guy. And I'm going to hit some drive on it. said sometimes you'd be looking for the fundamental there to push it up but actually i'm looking to cut that down a little bit it sounds kind of murky and cloudy but i also have kind of like a little vision in my head that i'm doing with this let's go to the snare bottom Let's go ahead and grab the ambit. All 
All right. Let's pop it in the mix. Also going to work here with the console one they have it set up so you can bring in your verbs and stuff like that and i'm going to go ahead and bring up some uh verb on my ambient like i said that's where i would want to do it in this particular track i don't want to you know put it on like the snare top or anything direct I want to kind of get this in a space so let's go ahead and throw some reverb i got you know set up in my template as you can see here i got um got a couple reverbs here and then i got a couple delays i work really simple and uh, kind of like we did years ago. Anyway, let's go ahead and add some verb to this. go ahead and go to our overhead and like i said i'm trying to do this so i'll be doing them about the same with each other right when i'm doing this comparison just see which is the easiest workflow okay let's go to our overhead guitar there we go Let's go ahead and throw on our guitars. guitar. where we're going to call it on this one and uh let me go ahead and just play a little bit of this for you and we'll see what we 
gotten this little short kind of mix getting up levels here with the console one you guys can see me work with it a little bit i wasn't doing anything super taxing i was just basically uh you know just doing it pretty simple but anyway let's play what we got here and i'll mess with the mix just a little bit here we go All right, guys, now we got the SSL controller ready to go, and we're going to go ahead and do the mix. Let me hit the 360, and here's our SSL channel. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get it up here in this view, and let's start mixing. Here we go. All right, let's go ahead and grab the kick out here. All right, let's grab the kick sub. Let's go ahead and do a little low and high pass here. All right, let's go to our snare top. near bottom. Let's go to our ambient room. Let me go ahead and pop the 360 off. And we got our verb on there already, which is left from the other one. But that's just fine. Okay, let's go to our overhead. Let's go to our bass guitar, slide that in, here we go.
like I said, we're, you know, more than looking at tones and stuff like that. I'm just kind of running through, kind of getting, you know, a little workflow here, seeing how, you know, it's clicking with my head and everything. Let's go to our guitar. Let's go to our other guitar. So I'm going to come back here and let me play just a little bit of this mix we did here. And this is the one that was with the SSL. Here we go. So I'm going to take a little bit of time and I'm going to think over my thoughts on both of these controllers and I'm going to let you know what I think. Let me go ahead and have a think and I'll be right back. All right, guys. So I took a little time and, you know, I thought about this, what controller I like the best. And, you know, this is hard because they are both really, really, really strong controllers. Um, they both are great. Um, I have to, for me personally, I have to go with the console one by Softube. Some of this is also because I originally had the original console one. So some of this is, you know, muscle memory that I liked of the console one. Let's start first with kind of the EQ section. I really, really love the EQ section, how it's laid out on the SSL. It feels more like mixing on a console. It feels like the layout of the SSL. The bus compressor as well. I mean, that just really clicks with you. Now, some of the stuff that to me is just, you know, that works great with the console one is I love all the being able to select all your tracks up top. Um, I love the little bitty scribble strips, whatever you want to call them. They're very clear and it seems like you... For some reason, it just sticks out in my face better. Now, the SSL has one as well. But overall, what is the deal breaker for me and gets me more involved with the SoftTube Console 1 is the integration with your DAW. You don't have to have an instance of the plug open sitting in the background like when I'm using the SSL. Unless I'm doing something totally wrong, guys, I have to have this plug in sitting open in the background somewhere. If I close that, this controller will no longer follow what I'm doing over here. And I'll click on this and I'll be thinking that I'm on the kick and I'll be sitting here EQing something I didn't want to be. I'll be on the sub, right? It's just a thing that I don't think you should have open. You have the, the GUI right here, right? I mean, that's like on the console one, you put that up. Now you could also mix with this that looks more like your SSL console one, right? You open this up, let it pop up here for you. And it's not as intuitive to mix with, right? But when you click here and you open the GUI, right, here's all your tracks laid out. It's so easy to see. The SSL one, when you open that up, like for me, a lot of it I'm sure is the resolution that the monitor set on, but it's just so busy for my eyes, okay? With the um, console one, what is great with it, and this doesn't happen on the 
SSL. With the console one, I got my screen. I can actually see what I'm doing to EQ right here, and I could see my compressor and all that stuff. For me personally, guys, it has to go to the console one. Just because of the integration is so tight, I don't spin knobs on things I don't want to be spinning knobs on. I click on something on my controller, I know that if I turn this, you know, I'm turning the high mids or whatever on that kick. So anyway, guys, hey, I am Rhett with the Mix Club, man. I hope this was a fun video. I've been wanting to do it forever. Um, but anyway, guys, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Do all that good stuff. Till next time, guys, I'm Rhett. We'll see y'all later. Be safe now.